Here with me is Professor Andra Shulujinaj, uh, Director of UNESCO IG and also the Chair of the International Committee and the Drafting Group of the Budapest Water Summit. Could you give a brief explanation about the final statement of this Budapest Water Summit? The final statement has been prepared for nearly four months now. The, the drafting group that was composed of the moderators of the various summit sessions and the various fora that were uh, annexed and attached to the, and they were integral part of the summit, we got together in, uh, in Hungary in June uh, to, to draft the skeleton of a text, of a statement, uh, that would be linked uh, to the sustainable development goals and the development goals beyond 2015. What were, at the time, and that was four months ago, what were the main ideas and emerging issues that, that could perhaps be put forth uh, to, the, to the summit for their uh, discussion? So indeed, the, the preparation of the, the draft, and within the International Program Committee, was a small drafting group of, like, a dozen people, even less. The idea was uh, to to channel somehow the possible and potential outcomes uh, of the the summit. And I think uh, after a, a very wide range of consultations, the first draft has been put up on the web for an open and transparent uh, uh, consultation. And two weeks prior to the uh, to the summit, we have sent it to uh, to all the participants a modified uh, version. And even during the summit. The drafting group had two sessions, night sessions, in order to incorporate the latest uh, developments. The whole idea was to have an all-encompassing uh, statement on, uh, on water and the sustainable development uh, goals uh, with a view to be all-inclusive as well. So we, we tried, it was not a negotiated text. The whole idea was to have a text that is, uh, that is consensus-based, which means that the overwhelming majority of the participants would, would endorse it. And that happened. So at the end, I think we have a, 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 a very good statement, uh, thanks to the participants and thanks to the, uh, to the, to the various fora, the, the Science Forum, the Youth Forum, the uh, Citizens Forum, and uh, for the first time we also had a philanthropic forum, to bring together the various parties on, on how to design really the, uh, the water-related uh, SDGs. And one of the main recommendations was to have a de dedicated water goal in the Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, what are the other main recommendations in this, in this uh, statement? Well, indeed, uh, that was a very important uh, uh, resolution, if you wish, of the participants to have a single dedicated goal devoted to water uh, and sanitation. And then I have to admit, uh, I have to say immediately that water is not just water supply, because in the public mind for many years there was this confusion that the Millennium Development, uh, similar to the Millennium Development Goals, the SDGs will be about water supply and sanitation. Now it goes far beyond. Water includes water supply, but it has uh, a great number of, uh, of other uh, ideas uh, as well. The, uh, one of the important outcomes, although it seems very easy uh, and, and you know obvious, but one of the, the debates were over the past months whether uh, should the world have one uh, single goal dedicated to water and sanitation, or as water is all over the place, it is related to food security, it is related to poverty, it is related to energy security, it is related to climate change, to ecosystem functions. It is underpinning everything that makes this world uh, sustainable. Therefore, it should be a cross-cutting theme. Many at the conference uh, and the summit have argued that, well, if water is everywhere, it's nowhere. If there is no particular attention given to the importance of water and focus on the importance of water, then it would be too diffuse, and perhaps even we would we would lose the the, the gains which 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 humanity gained over the past uh, 13 years in the Millennium Development Goals, and the momentum of water issues would lose. Uh, and uh, uh, sanitation and hygiene goal, the WASH goal, as we used to uh, abbreviate it, that ought to continue because we have a great deal of unfinished business, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa, uh, and it's uh, it's a universal concern for everybody uh, concerned that the WASH goals continue because of this unfinishedness. On the other hand, there are other emerging issues which make which make water really the the heart of sustainability, namely. Um, 
the climate variability and the need uh, to develop climate adaptive uh, water resources strategies. There's a big debate in, in the summit, as it happens over the past nearly 30 years now. The role of storage, uh, and then the, the emerging idea was it that, and this is written in the statement, that humanity will need more storage to cope with the extremes, whether you talk about extreme water which you have to store, uh, or, or you talk about low uh, water situations, arid zones, where you need to use water that is being stored. Uh, and uh, that, 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 that was an important, uh, one of the important recommendations, at the same time paying attention and particular attention to ecosystem functions. And one of the other recommendations was um, a robust intergovernmental institutional mechanism. Um, what, is your, what are your thoughts about that? Well, there was a, a long uh, debate, Stefan, about this, this whole issue during the conference, in the previous versions, if you look at in, in the web, uh, it's even a bit more explicit, because then it says, well, uh, the, the summit uh, participants invite governments and the United Nations to look into the matter of how water could be further elevated in the intergovernmental debate. And many argued that the last fully-fledged intergovernmental conference on water uh, was 36 years ago. It was in 1977 in Mar del Plata, the United Nations, uh, United Nations Conference on Water, which had an impact that we feel even today. The whole notion of integrated water resources management came out from that conference and then all the derivatives that, that come, uh, come from. Many felt that similar to, uh, to uh, intergov other intergovernmental panels, such as, for instance, IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, uh, which really have a great deal to raise the profile of an extremely important subject, not only in the public mind, but also for the politicians, uh, that now the politicians really understand uh, what is at stake with respect to climate change. But at the same time, it has given impulse to a, a very concentrated, coordinated uh, scientific research all over the, the world to better understand the, the climate mechanism and you know what, what is ahead, likely in the coming uh, couple of hundred uh, years, how the climate will likely change. So many argued that, well, uh, in order to really have water high up uh, on the agenda, there would be likely, uh, but that's an open thing and that has been left open, uh, a, an intergovernmental mechanism likely under the auspices of the UN or the, of part of the United Nations system need to be created where the fragmented efforts, whether they are on water supply, on sanitation, on floods, on water resources assessment, ought to be brought together under a common umbrella. So governments would be given the opportunity to discuss and exchange views over water policies based on rigorous science. Yet the gap between policy and science is not closing but science can help policy making very dramatically. So that's the whole idea, to bring together the, the, uh, the parties, not to have a, a, a super uh, controlling uh, body, but recognizing that governments have an ultimate responsibility uh, for water, recognizing that politicians alone cannot solve the, the issues, but also recognizes that science, whatever power science has, is not enough. So there ought to be a, a dialogue. So this, this idea of an intergovernmental institution that could be a panel, that could be an open working group, that could be a, a regular feature, uh, with the principal objective of keeping an eye on uh, whatever we, we agree upon is really being implemented, and if there are implementation difficulties, how uh, politics and, and an intergovernmental framework can help to solve those problems. What came out very strongly, and I think... Uh, I think it's, it's very important that there is finally the recognition, the capacity development, because we can decide anything. Politicians can decide anything in the UN and anywhere else. If there is no local implementation capability, then it will be just a written word and it does not become an action. So that, that although it's a simple recognition, but many, many participants, and it was really, uh, you know, music to my heart that the Youth Forum was very instrumental in getting that uh, message through that uh, capacity development is the heart of the matter, whether you talk about data, data collection, data sharing over transboundary water basins, access to data, no more secrecy in, in, in that regard, 
And equally important is uh, education, education, education. Many at the end of the say, uh, uh, at the end of the, the day, uh, the closing day, said that without improving the educational capabilities, particularly for the benefit of the developing countries and countries in transition, there could be no solution. So that uh, that that gives an additional task for our institute in the coming uh, uh, coming years, if if not decades. But uh, I was well, if I may say as. Uh, as, as somebody who is working for this, uh, this institute, I was very pleased to see the reaction of, of, of people and the recognition that this is a must uh, and it, be, it ought to be a part of the Sustainable Development Goals on water.